Okay, we're ready to go. Sounds like it. All right. All right, let me call the uh, May 6, 2020 Water and Sewer Commission meeting to order. Introduce everybody. We have uh, Barney Quinn, who is the uh, town engineer. I'm Dick Swanson. I'm the uh, chair. I see Mark Moxley over there is a member. Council uh, liaison Larry Hushauer, uh, Ron Runkles, and John Cherry. We have a full complement of members of the meeting. And um, this is a virtual meeting. And if you're going to watch us on uh, Facebook and would like to make a comment, it can be relayed to us. So please do. And the first order of business is approval of the minutes of March 4, 2020. There was not a meeting in April due to the coronavirus and the uh, town hall being closed. Um, you got a chance to uh, review the minutes. I ask you, are there any edits, changes, comments? Motion to accept. Somebody want to make a motion? I'll make, I'll make a motion to accept. All right, Mark. Uh, it, who wants to second that? I'll second that. All right, John. Any further discussion? All in favor, say raise your hand. All right, outstanding. Uh, First order of business is uh, the status of the uh, rainfall and the flow in the wastewater treatment plant. And I am going to get up here if I can find the right. Let's see, where are we here? Flow. Uh, everybody should have a copy of this. This is the uh, water uh, flow, well production, and uh, point of entry pumps. That is where the water after filtration goes into the system for distribution. And the wastewater treatment plant flow. And um, as we know that wastewater treatment plant flow should be similar or less than the amount of water going into the system. The difference is mainly due to inflow and infiltration into the system. And you'll notice that we have an uptick for April. And the uptick is due to the um, large amount of rain that we had. Let me jump over to this, uh, that and, okay, uh, what are we doing here? And you should have a copy of this uh, map for April, which shows that we were between 50 and 75% uh, in excess of the normal rainfall, which accounts for inflow into our wastewater treatment sewer system. So uh, I just want to bring that to your attention. It's still a problem. And uh, in the talk about this a little later, but in the budget, we are continuing to try to fund uh, efforts to reduce the amount of inflow. And I just question, anybody have any comments? Good. Dick, Dick if I can inter uh, interject here for a moment. Sure. Um, because we're doing it this method, people are having a hard time hearing. So just speak up a little bit for everybody. Oh. Oh, okay. Uh, Barney, you might want to just uh, chime in on this. Uh, I asked you when you sent me an email with the uh, places where there is a uh, large amount of inflow into the uh, wastewater treatment plant. And uh, I've got them here. I can read them. There are five of them. Uh, you want to comment or you want me just to uh, let everybody know where these hot spots are? Well, we, we have a few hot spots. Um, we did a little bit since since I gave you that list, uh, we did a little bit more searching. Um, we kind of eliminated one of those hot spots, which was just above St. Andrew's Church on um, the Oak, Maple, Church Street, that area. Um, we've kind of, we did some video cameraing and uh, on some of these locations in that 
we kind of start rolling that one out a little bit. Um, so we're, we're concentrating on those four other areas. Okay. And uh, by the way, just for information, because we've talked to us about this for a lot, is that does not include the uh, CSX culvert in that list. Um, these are other places where we are experiencing uh, high infiltration. So we've got the well, money. The, mm -hmm. Go ahead. Uh, the Village Gate tennis courts, um, where it shows that, that is the line that comes from that culvert. So that, that is our number one hotspot. Okay, I stand corrected. Yep, yep. All right. Uh, also, uh, public information, if we're done with uh, the rainfall and wastewater treatment plant, uh, public information, uh, this is just on here to say that we have not made much progress in doing our public service announcements. We're off with doing one on stormwater management, but uh, unfortunately, uh, Coronavirus has uh, delayed all of that. So we're waiting the town hall gets opened up and we can get reorganized and then uh, go ahead and proceed with that. Uh, this is gonna be a series, hopefully, of uh, public service announcements dealing with water, sewer, and stormwater management. So uh, that's just an update to let you know we're, we're on hold. Uh, any comments? Okay. I want to get down to the budget, and uh, Larry, I was going to ask you if you uh, could give us an update on uh, water and sewer budget. Uh, yeah, I can give an update. I, I did want to uh, say that uh, as far as education goes, we, we have put out a couple of uh, statements about making sure that you don't flush anything except for toilet paper and things that come out of the anatomy. So keep the paper towels, the wipes, all that other stuff out of your toilet. So um, we have had a little bit of focus on that. <laughs> so, and um, according to our public works director, everything seems to be going good with, uh, with water and sewer. So uh, no problems there. Uh, as far as the budget goes, I, I think Dick, you mainly wanted uh, capital uh, issues and uh, and I was going to bring up a few of those. Yeah. I had sent this out as a public document, but the uh, uh, the budget uh, worksheet uh, to all the members and emphasize pages uh, nine and ten of that. And I'll just run through the capital expenses uh, real quick, and um, um, maybe I'll start with the revenue part of it, and mention that a lot of our revenue. Uh, is attributed to the building of Brittany Manor. So there are funds coming in uh, because Brittany Manor is being built out with, uh, I, I believe it's somewhere around 87 houses, something like that. Uh, so money is trickling in for that on the revenue side. So. Uh, on the capital expenses side, uh, the first one is uh, sewer system capital improvements. And a lot of that money is going toward a sludge building that is gonna be built. Um, and so that's budgeted into that line. And then uh, next one is water system capital improvements. Uh, that includes money for tank uh, number two, uh, which is actually in the budget this year and being rolled over to the budget next year. Uh, the next one is the inflow and infiltration and that one's plussed up, uh, or uh, not plussed up, but it does have $200,000 in there for uh, uh, infiltration and inflow. Um, there's a miscellaneous category that has about $10,000 in it uh, for anything that may come on, and uh, no trucks or vehicles this year. Uh, the well exploration and development uh, there's $15,000 in there, and that's based on Harrison Lashier uh, and the expenses associated with that. And that, that kind of wraps up the capital expenses for next fiscal year. And, and that's all I have, unless someone asks questions. Thank you, Larry. Um, anyway, you froze up. I, th uh, uh, I don't know if I'm frozen or Dick is. <laughs> I think Dick is. I heard you, Larry. I, I can't. Dick's picture's froze on mine. 
Okay. What's the purpose of the 15K for the, uh, the well expiration? Uh, let's see. Barney, if you can answer quicker than me, feel free to jump in. No, I guess it's on the capital side of the house. Um, the completion of expansion of the water pipe from eight inches to 12 inches on Center Street, that's going through and that's being done coincidentally with putting a uh, road surface in the I think you're kind of cutting right. in and out. Uh, get down to the reason that uh, we really, emergency response team, the town of Mount. I am? Oh dear. <laughs> uh, you're, you're coming in and out, but we can tell that you're on that uh, emergency hear me now? response team. <laughs> I think we lost them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, to answer your question about that 15,000, uh, John, um, that um, if, if we were to start uh, working on any kind of engineering uh, towards that, we don't know exactly when that's going to get started. So mm -hmm. if there's anything, it was just to have a placeholder for some, some funds, not, not a lot of funds to get started. Oh, there we go. I get, I, you lost me there? For yes. We did. Dick, you could turn off your video. That would probably help. Can you hear me? Everybody, yeah. We hear you, Dick, but you're broken up. I think there's a lot more traffic tonight than there was last night. There must be. Dick, there's an alternative if you want to just call in rather than use video. Um, you could just use, uh, I think on the email, it shows a call in um, procedure. You can also hit the uh, stop video button down on the bottom left. That should save bandwidth for him. Am I back? Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. I can see you. All right. I don't know what happened here. Uh, I've been blank here. Uh, all right. I was talking about emergency response team of the town of Mount Airy, who's outside of town, uh, were to have a loss of their well production due to drought or some other emergency, would the town or could the town or should the town be in a position where they would provide water to those people in an emergency uh, situation? I think Dick, uh, we'll see if he comes back on. There. I'm Dick, you back, to... right? <laughs> yeah, you're, you're back. back. Would you like for me to address that? Yeah, go ahead, because I'm not, I'm having a technical problem here. Okay. All right, uh, basic, basically as we were going through the emergency response plan uh, in dealing with the pandemic, uh, one of the questions that came up would be a scenario, you know, where 
you know, say we had a, a loss of electricity or the surrounding community did. And, and the gist of the question is, uh, you know, we have a commodity in town, that commodity being the ability to have water. And uh, the question was asked if, if we should consider in advance the possibility of assisting residents who, who were on wells who were outside of town limits. So basically they had an interruption in their water supply. Uh, should we have something planned to assist uh, at, at cost or, or, you know, or however we deemed it uh, beneficial to assist the residents and surrounding communities if their water supply was interrupted? And that's, that's the gist of the question. And we just wanted to bat that around a little bit here uh, before we dealt with it again as part of adjusting the emergency response plan. So that would be via water tank, I assume? Tank truck? Uh, yeah, yeah, it would be, uh, you know, uh, I think at one point we sold water and Dick would probably remember this. I think we sold, uh, we allowed Health Unlimited to fill their swimming pool, which granted they're in town and everything, but it was uh, it, it was not usual for us to allow somebody to fill their swimming pool using town water. Um, but uh, this would be, you know, uh, uh, possibly individuals, possibly a tank truck, uh, you know, whatever it is where if we were in an emergency situation where residents outside of our town limits could basically utilize Mount Airy as a, as a water supplier uh, to help them get through whatever emergency was going on. I think it's a great idea. Yeah, seems seems like the appropriate thing to do for sure. Yeah, some, think, some logistical think, challenges, but yeah. Yeah, Ronnie, did you have anything? Oh, I I I agree. We should be willing to share, provided we have the supply. Okay. And I think we probably will. Yeah. I think we're in pretty good shape. All right. Well, now I can go back to them when they start ironing out this plan and let them know that the um, uh, Water and Sewer Commission have, have at least thought about this. And, and we'll see. I'm not sure it has to be in the emergency response plan, but it's, it's good to kind of know that it's um, something we could do if, if needed by the surrounding community. Now, Larry, do you need a motion or anything would you like a motion from the board i don't think so because they have not uh we haven't even entered the uh, uh rewriting of the emergency response plan at this point so i would say there may be a day that i come back and we vet the the emergency response plan and at that point we we may want to have a vote on it but at this point there's there's nothing in writing it's just a, a concept that we wanted to discuss prior to going into uh, discussing the emergency response plan. Okay, sounds like a plan. If you can hear me, can you hear me? Yes. My, yes. Okay, I'm back. Uh, I would say it sounds like from the little I could get, uh, everybody is uh, in agreement that that's a good idea to proceed down that road um, and consider uh, whatever the emergency response team, you know, puts out. I had also uh, sent you something in relation to that about the mayor's ability, if we had a drought within the, and it required us to, the town, to consider limiting the uh, use of water. And there is a policy out there, it's been around for a number of years, that we ought to throw that in the plan too, if they're going to do it, just to cover that issue. Uh, I sent you the also code section that authorizes the mayor to be able to do that. Um, my uh, limited experience is that as far as the water for people outside, I don't believe that would require a code change. That would simply require the fact that it's part of an emergency plan because mayors have certain uh, latitude in taking unilateral action in uh, case of emergency where there's not time to come together in the town council to either amend the code or pass a resolution or make a budget amendment. So, uh, but I do think we might as well cover 
additional bases if we can with um, going ahead with the emergency uh, response team. So, uh, anybody feel comfortable with that? I do. Yeah. Okay. Uh, go ahead, John. Uh, you want to say just on a related note, I did think that that, uh, that tiered system seems quite complicated. I'd forgotten how complicated that was, but seven different tiers. I know that's not the point of the of why you circulated it, but isn't that pretty complex? I don't. I, there's no reason why we can't uh, revisit that and uh, you know make a recommendation, have a change that was produced by the Water and Sewer Commission a number of years ago. It, it might warrant a review. I think. I, don't, I mean, uh, it, maybe it's something we we put on the agenda for a future date just to discuss it a little bit. It is uh, 12 years old and, and signed by somebody who doesn't work here anymore. It might be nice to have something that's, you know, up to date, uh, even if it didn't change a lot, but at least get the uh, uh, a new signature on it. Okay, I'll put that on a future agenda. We can address it and uh, come up with something. Okay. So, uh, and Larry, if I understand, you think it'd be a good idea just to let the uh, emergency response team kind of uh, consider how they want to approach this and then kind of vet that with us? Yeah, uh, I think that would be, you know, I, I think making a motion denied or anything would would not be uh, beneficial because there we have nothing to look at. We have no document uh, uh, to look at. And um, so let's see where the emergency uh, response um, uh, team goes with it as far as uh, rewriting this thing. Uh, which is probably going to be the fall. I think the chief, uh, um, Chief Reitz has taken a, a look at it from the police standpoint, but the fire department hasn't taken a look yet, and and no team has taken a look at it at this point. So, right, and and uh, just for future reference, I had uh, raised a couple of uh, suggestions, if you will, in that email chain dealing with this. That if uh, they go ahead with this it probably should be considered those things and at least some determination they should be addressed or don't need to be addressed in anything the uh, emergency response team does so just keep that in the back of your head as we uh, go forward we'll wait for them to uh, give us some input okay okay all right Good. yeah i don't have anything else does anybody else have uh uh, any new business to address? I do have two announcements to make, but anything else? Yeah. Uh, Is one of your announcements going to be an update on the stormwater pond down in East West Park, or is that right now on hold because of the COVID? No, that's not on hold. Uh, Barney, uh, you want to chime in and give them a uh, update on that because uh, we're we're progressing. Yeah, that's moving forward. Um, we're very close to, um, you know, through design. We're very far through design on that. And okay. uh, so the Twin Ridge Pond's moving along first, but then the East West will be following up not too long after. Okay, so ground will be broke before the first end of this year or the end of the budget year? They are actually both budgeted for the upcoming FY21 uh, year. Okay, 21, not this year, okay. So start in July, yep. Okay, good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anything else? No. I don't know if we have anybody uh, listening in on this, but I uh, just wanted to pass on to the public that uh, there was an article in the Washington Post that said that uh, with washing your hands and being cleanly for uh, coronavirus, uh, people were leery of using their public water systems and were buying humongous amounts of uh, bottled water to do that, which ends up being very expensive. And I, and I just wanted to point out that as far as Mount Airy is concerned, uh, that is not a concern. Uh, Mount Airy water is uh, some of the best water actually in the state of Maryland. So you should have need to uh, go out and get bottled water as a result of uh, the coronavirus. Uh, we have good water, so don't spend the money. 
The other thing is that uh, there have been some people that have contacted town hall and said they had, did not get a water bill. Uh, and if you did not get a water bill sometime after uh, April 15th, then you should contact town hall and let them know. And they can tell you what your water bill will be, uh, but we don't want to uh, have people come up and be late with their water bill. Even though the late fees have been waived, um, you know, we'd like to keep people uh, on track with that. But if you do have a problem paying your water bill, also contact town hall and see about working out uh, some sort of arrangement to take care of that. So I just wanted to pass information on, and I don't know if Barney or Gina want to add anything to that. No, we're, we're good? Okay. Uh, if, uh, I'm good. <laughs> you're good. Barney's always good. Um, also, uh, I just say uh, we're going to go for a meeting in June. Um, we'll, I'll make that definitive as time moves on and see what we have in the agenda. And then uh, we'll find out whether we need to be virtual or we can go back and meet at town hall. So I'll, I'll keep you posted on that. Anything else? No. All right, motion to adjourn. Who wants to make a motion to adjourn? John, go for it. <laughs> John, John uh, Ron? All right, Ron. I got a second on that one? I'll second it. All right, Mark, and uh, I assume we're all in favor, right? Right, we're all in favor. All right. Have a good night. Thanks guys. a lot, in spite of the technical Bye. difficulties, and we'll see if we can do better next time. All right. Indeed. Take care. Thanks a lot, Barney. Thanks a lot, Gina. Yep. Good night, folks. Good night.